Can you guess who's dead yet? <laughs> Sorry. I had to. Uh, Ron, Ron Farish's death. Disgraced entertainer and convicted paedophile <laughs> dies age 93. Convicted paedophile, pa uh, pile of pedos. Uh, convicted paedophile had reportedly been sick with cancer. Uh, bloody. Go away. Right, uh, disgraced entertainer and convicted sex offender Rolf Harris has died at the age of 93. His death was confirmed by a registrar at Maidenhead Town Hall, the PA news agency said. A cause of death, a cause of death has yet to be disclosed. In October, it was reported that the convicted paedophile was gravely sick with neck cancer and was receiving around-the-clock care. Uh, the Australian-born TV presenter was a family favourite for decades before being convicted of a string of indecent assaults in June of 2014. That was all part of Operation U Tree. After Jimmy Savile died, a bunch of famous celebrities started getting investigated for historic cases, blah, 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 and uh, hey-ho, uh, he got caught in the investigation. Uh, these included one on an eight-year-old autograph hunter, two on girls in their early teens, and a catalogue of abuse against his daughter's friend over 16 years. Harris was jailed for five years and nine months after being convicted of 12 assaults, which took place between 1968 and 1986. Following his conviction, he was stripped of his many honours, including his CBE, OBE, MBE, MVP, sorry, uh, and membership of the Order of Australia. In May 2017, Harris was formally cleared of four unconnected historical sex offences, which he had denied. Later the same year, one of the 12 indecent assault convictions was overturned by the Court of Appeal. Born in Western Australia, Harris gained a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Western Australia and a Diploma of Education from Claremont Teachers College, which is now known as Edith Cowan University. At 16, he successfully submitted a self-portrait oil painting as part of the 1947 Archibald Prize. His work was one of 80 that was hung in the Art Gallery of New South Wales, and two years later, he won the Claude Hodgson Prize for oil colours with his landscape on a May morning, Guildford. <clears throat> He was also a champion swimmer, it's winning the West. I love how they're still going through all of his accolades, though. It's almost like it's a Pavlovian thing for a journalist to do when someone dies. Uh, winning the Western Australia State Champion over a variety of distances and strokes between 1948 and 1952. When he turned 22 in 1952, Harris moved to England, becoming an art student at City and Guilds of London Art School. He swiftly found fame at the BBC one year later, after being enlisted to perform 10-minute cartoon drawings played during a children's show named Jigsaw. His success on Jigsaw led to his led to an appearance on Whirly Gig in which he created the character Willoughby who would spring to life on a drawing board before being erased at the end of each instalment. While being mentored by Australian Impressionist painter Hayward Veal, Harris would also play a weekly piano accordion set at a club named Down Under, where he developed his skills as an entertainer. Years later, he created what was considered his theme song, <laughs> Tie Me Down Kangaroo Spot. <laughs> I, can, I even I remember it, Jesus. Uh, in 1959, Harris recorded uh, the novelty track, which famously features a wobble board, uh, and it became a hit in Australia and the UK. Three years later, he re-recorded the song with assistance from music producer George Martin, who who would become known in the 1960s for his work with the Beatles, and the track became a hit in the US. Harris's other tracks include Jake the Pig, oh, I remember that one as well, uh, and his version of the 1902 Hall song, Two Little Boys, <laughs> which became the Christmas number one song in the UK charts for six weeks in 1969. The entertainer who went on to play Glastonbury Festival seven times from 1993 to 2013 also played the didgeridoo on Kate Bush's 1982 album The Dreaming and did so again for the singer's 2005 record Aerial. Harris became a prominent figure in UK TV in the 60s and 70s. He was given his own BBC series, The Rolf Harris Show, and was appointed the UK commentator for the Eurovision Song Contest in 1967. The entertainer went on to utilise his art skills in shows, including BBC One's Rolf's Cartoon Time and Rolf's Cartoon Club, which aired on CITV. Uh, Jesus Christ, CITV. God, I remember CITV. Oh, that had things like Around the Twist... Uh, that one about the magic pocket watch and everyone as well. Fuck me. 
Jesus Christ, my childhood. Uh, he was introduced to, to a new generation of TV viewers following the premiere of Animal Hospital, which ran on BBC One from 1994 to 2003. It won Most Popular Factual Entertainment Show at the National TV Award a total of five times. Harris painted Queen Elizabeth II's official portrait to commemorate her 80th birthday in 2005. A portrait he once painted of singer Bonnie Tyler was valued at an estimated £50,000 on Antiques Roadshow in 2011. The entertainer was arrested as part of the Operation Yew Tree investigation in 2012, which was set up in the wake of the Jimmy Savile sex abuse scandal. Uh, despite a reportedly well-known... Blah. Despite a reportedly well-known reputation for groping in Australia, the entertainer was viewed as an early champion of child protection campaigns in the UK. In 1985, he presented an educational film about child sexual abuse titled Kids Can Say No. <laughs> Partly not to him. Uh, during his trial, which began in May 2014, prosecutors claimed that the entertainer was a Jekyll and Hyde character who used his fame to abuse underage girls with impunity. In his sentencing, Justice Sweeney said Harris clearly got a thrill from committing some of his assaults while others were present or nearby. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, Peter Watt, representing the NSPCC in 2014, sorry, burping a lot, uh, said that Harris's convictions send a message that no one is untouchable and justice can come at any time. Following his release from prison, Harris subsequently withdrew from public life, spending his time in Bray, Berkshire. Uh, the death of the timey down kangaroo sports singer comes just days after the release of a new ITV documentary about his crimes, telling of the rise and fall of the former national treasure. And that was one of the things as well as... Uh, I'll admit, like, Rolf Harris is still a piece of shit. What, the stuff that he done was nowhere near as bad as Jimmy Savile. Like, Jimmy Savile's stuff was, like, cartoonishly fucking evil. Whereas, Rolf Harris was still bad. Like, he definitely still deserved prison for all the stuff that he'd done. But in the same way that people were, like, shocked about it, went, Jimmy? Jimmy Savile? Really? Like, everyone was so shocked and appalled by it because it's, like, the TV presenter, the nice guy that does the charity runs, blah, blah, blah. Everyone was, like, shocked. People were really shocked about Rolf Harris as well because there was a... I forget the name of the cartoon. I used to watch it all the time. I remember it because my grandfather uh, taped it for me. My grandfather used to uh, find things on the TV that he thought I would like whenever he was babysitting me and he would tape them. A lot of it was David Attenborough as well, which is why I love David Attenborough so much. Uh, but it was a cartoon and Rolf Harris was in it. And it was a cartoon about people being sent to Australia. See how Australia used to be a British prison colony? It was about people being sent there. I forget what it's called. I remember one of the songs, Work for the Men of the Iron Gang or some shit. I'm going to look that up because I used to I watched that all the time when I was a kid whenever I was uh, staying over at my grandfather's house. I need to try and remember that. It's going to bother me. But, you know, that childhood memory is fucking ruined <laughs> because the guy that fucking was in it and made all the music and everything was a raging fucking nonce. So, yeah, that's great. Uh, thanks, Rolf. <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, I will say, though, uh, given his history, you know... Nothing's going to wash away the things that he did, so I don't think many people are going to be shedding a tear over this one. 